How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob with Smetting Performance and today we're building a kind of unique LS combination. This combo is very common with Gen 1 small block Chevy and a little bit of Gen 2 LTs, but for Gen 3, Gen 4 LS, not many people go this way. So let me show you what we're working with. So this customer brought us his 6.0 iron LS block to get rebuilt with the new rotating assembly. Now whenever a customer comes into the shop, my I guess big goal or the thing that I'm trying to achieve the most um, when discussing the build with the customer is what are your goals? Are you trying to make a bunch of power? Are you looking for a lot of efficiency? Where do you want your torque curve to be? What are you looking for? Because that way I can help give you, the customer, um, basically the, the best combo that you're looking for. So this guy was kind of unique. Most of the LS guys, I'll just be honest, max power. How much power can I make? I don't care what it costs. Build me as much power as you can. This guy did not want that. He wanted something that on paper was fairly unique that would give him a unique driving style in the car. And so for that build, we are doing a 383-60 LS, not LS1. LS1 is pretty common. You just put a four inch stroke crank in it, hone the block five over, you get a 383. This way though, we're kicking it old school. We're doing a 3.75 stroke crankshaft coupled with a 6.3 inch H-beam connecting rod. And the piston is a 1.050 compression height, really short compression height with a 6.3 inch rod and a 3.75 stroke crank. So I've already balanced this entire rotating assembly. The crank is a spec, the block is fully machined. We put the block in our CNC rottler and we parallel the decks. And what I mean by that is basically the deck height on all eight cylinders is exactly the same. We locate the block off of the main journal and the cam tunnel on a fit on a jig and it rotates it exactly 90 degrees. You cut it clean, roll the block over, cut it clean, and they are exact. So the block's been blueprinted back to spec. It's been bored and honed 30 over, so we have a 4030 bore. And now Shay, I'm gonna hand the camera off to, and he's gonna take you guys the rest of the way. He's gonna show you all checking the main bearing clearance, checking the rod bearing clearance, as well as, whoop, as well as gapping all the piston rings. And from there, once it's all finished, y'all can stuff it. All right guys, one thing I wanted to mention to you, if you're doing this at home, or if you're assembling an LS motor at home, is when you're looking at these main caps, they have to go on a specific way. They have to go back on the block the same way, in the same order that they were machined in. So on an LS block, these little tangs on the back of the cap here, they all face back except for cap number five. That cap is going to face forward if they're on there correctly. So something to look out for if you're uh, buying a motor from somebody or you're doing this at home, be conscious of that. go back here and chamfer these little corners on the cap sometimes when you're rolling the bearing in and you're pushing the bearing down it can peel some of the backing off the bearing because this is very sharp um, that's not really something you want uh, but you know they put that backing on the bearing for a reason you want that to remain intact and so we put a little chamfer here and here just to ensure that it's not damaging the bearing
All right, guys, so crankshaft is final installed. Everything's moving really nice. We do have thrust clearance. I can feel it. We'll measure that, make sure it's adequate, that everything's turning nice. I had to play a little bit of uh, musical bearings with this thing. So let me uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So what I've done here to achieve proper clearance is I've mixed a set of standard extra clearance bearings and just regular standard bearings. Um, with the full set of standards, it was a little tight, and so I put half an extra clearance bearing in it, should give me, which would give me an extra half thousandths. Um, so you have your two shells, and what they do, the difference between these two shells is, on a, like an X or a, a standard or even a one bearing, is like this will be a standard bearing. And then this is our extra clearance bearing. What they do is they make it thinner. So about half a thousandths thinner per shell so you can achieve your vertical oil clearance that you're trying to get. Uh, if you have too much clearance, you can put a one bearing in there, which is a thicker bearing to take up some of that space. If you have a whole set of X's, you'll gain an extra one thousandths clearance. If you have a whole set of one bearings, you will tighten that up one thousandths as well. So you have your sweet spot, which is standard, and then you have your one bearing tighter and your X bearing looser. And so I've mixed the standard and the X to achieve adequate oil clearance. Crankshaft went in with about two and a half thousandths of main bearing clearance all the way across. Just checking rod here. This rod here has about two, three for clearance. We're going to uh, check all the other ones, make sure they uh, they match, and then we can uh, throw these slugs in. All right, guys, so we're gapping rings. This is a 4030 bore, and we're gonna give this one five thousandths per inch, so 20. So I'm gonna do 20 on the top ring, and then uh, 22 on the second ring, and uh, then we'll throw these slugs in there. Measuring about a two and a half or three thousandths gap on these, so we're gonna go over to the ring filer and take about 17 and then uh, come back and see where we are. Uh, the ring filer is super accurate, so 17 is gonna end up 17. Just adjusting the ring filer here so we can ensure that these are going to be parallel to each other. Yeah, we have a sweep all the way across the ring. Should be parallel. I can go ahead and start gapping.
today. The short block is all finished up on this little 383 LS. Looks really nice. We got a nice little dome piston on there to give it some nice compression. It should sound really good. I'm not too sure what his camshaft is, um, but this combo is just going to be something that's unique, something a little special for the customer. And like I said in the beginning, he's not looking for all max power. If he was, we would have gone straight to a four inch stroke crankshaft. Um, he just wants a nice little hot rod cruiser. I think this motor is going into a 50s Bel Air or an early Chevy 2 Nova swap vehicle. But here it is all finished up and it is ready to go. Thanks for watching guys. In next week's video, we're going to be dynoing a 900 horsepower naturally aspirated 632 cubic inch big Chevy. So make sure you guys like and subscribe so y'all can watch that video with us. It's going to be awesome. I'll see y'all later.